This is the FT90 Gold Cube fuel flow sender. I ran this for a long time, but as you can see, it has some damage to the threads in the body. It's probably caused during the installation by me. I don't think it's any good for anything except recycling. So, figure let's see what's in it. It looks like the screws are designed to shear off, keep folks like us out of here. The FT90 is the gravity system sensor. Uses lower pressure than the Red Cube FT60. A lot of the low wing guys like the RV builders use the Red Cube because it has, they have fuel pumps. Since we run a high wing in the Bearhawk, it doesn't have any fuel pumps at all. It's gravity fed all the way from the tank to the carb. So in theory, the gold cube has a little more flow rate. When I did my initial fuel flow testing, I found about 26 gallons per hour, which was enough for our Lycoming 360 without having to worry about adding any pumps. And that was with this sensor in place. Hmm, what should we do now? I need to get a little wrench. There we go. So what do we have? Here's the pinwheel. Does the spinning. Looks like it's got a very sharp point. Probably for friction minimizing. That almost looks like some type of sensor there. wonder if it's optical. Let's see what we got over here. So my best guess is, inside here, that looks like some type of optical generator. This looks like some type of optical receiver. Of course, it could be the other way around. It looks like it's got a little lens, so I bet it shines a light, some type of light energy through these little fingers on the paddle wheel. And that's how it measures as this paddle wheel spins. These little fingers break the, the beam and it measures how many of those breaks it gets as it spins around. So if we can get into this side over here. So there's a circuit board in there. Surface mounted stuff. Some kind of resistor or something there. Must keep the workspace tidy. Looks like the incoming conductors are soldered there. There are four, even though there's only three here, there's one that's cut back flush. So at this point, ten minutes in, you might be wondering why we're going to the trouble to take apart an EI fuel flow sender rather than just chuck the thing in the trash. And that is a fair question, of course. And I figure, you know, we pilots and airplane builders, the more we know about how our equipment goes together, the more we can visualize or better hypothesize the failure modes. Like say, for example, if your sender were to stop or if you were to suspect that your sender had somehow failed you. How might it have failed? Perhaps the little pinwheel got stuck. Couldn't spin around anymore. Knowing that there's such a complicated circuit board in here gives us the option to consider that perhaps there's a failure of that circuit. If we didn't know that it was in here, how would we know that that was an option for it to fail? There we go. It's all potted with this JB Weldy kind of stuff. So it looks like that fourth conductor might not be connected to anything in here either. 
One, two, three. I suppose if I was a real genius, I could look at this circuit board and tell you what this circuit does based on what the components are and how they're arranged. And I have a, a friend who I did some transition training with, Michelle, who probably could tell you that. That's what his job is. But not for me. Well, that's what you got. Minus a few that uh, might have just been removed by my screwdriver through that process. Looks like we have a ground here. This spot with the conductors going in is where our optical thing is. And that optical beam would come across, hit this other optical thingy, whether it's the transmitter or receiver, turns a corner in here, comes out of this wire, which joins here, comes back through. I did ask EI if they would be willing to fix this for me. They said they're not repairable. I can see why. I don't think I'm going to bother spending the time to uh, dig out the rest of this potting because I think it's just space filler to keep those wires from being able to move around and vibrate. I think we've gotten a gist of what's in there. So now I'll chuck this in the aluminum bucket. Go do something more productive.